Greetings. My name is Stephen Myers and I am the founder of the Pharaoh's Pump Foundation. This is the introductory video of a series of videos about our research concerning how the Great Pyramid was built. All we ask is that you watch the entire series of videos and ponder the information they contain. An important aspect of our research is that water was pivotal to the construction and purpose of the Great Pyramid. There is much evidence for water on the Giza Plateau. Uh, Herodotus described the Great Pyramid as being surrounded by water like an island. He even mentioned that the Great Pyramid had an artificial duct connected to it. Sir Flanders Petrie found Nile earth inside the passages of the Great Pyramid which is understood to be sediment. The casing stones of the Great Pyramid are cemented together and the joints between them are watertight. The Great Sphinx and its enclosure are famous for being eroded by water. Our contention is that water was pivotal to the Great Pyramid and the role water played in the construction and purpose of the Great Pyramid will be described in greater detail in subsequent videos. Water was pivotal to the construction and purpose of the Great Pyramid. The Nile River was used to move many of the stones of the Great Pyramid on barges. One of the research organizations I am associated with has done a great deal of research and discoveries about water and erosion in and around ancient Egypt as well as on the Giza Plateau. That organization is called Giza for Humanity and I invite you to visit their website at www.gizaforhumanity.org. Another important issue concerning the Great Pyramid is the order in which the stones were set in place. It is our contention that the Great Pyramid was built level by level from the bottom up. In very basic terms, the first level of the Great Pyramid was built including casing stones. After the first level, or course, was completed, the next higher level of the Great Pyramid was built including casing stones. So basically, the Great Pyramid was built level by level, or course by course, including all the interior stones and the uh, casing stones for each level until the capstone was set in place. The Great Pyramid was built level by level including casing stones from the bottom up. The animations in this video series are intended to be very simple. The intent of these animations are not to concentrate on issues such as scale or complexity. Their purpose is much more important. The animations are intended to convey the major aspects of the fascinating construction procedures used to build the Great Pyramid. But more importantly, the casing stones for each level or course were set in place first for that level and then the interior stones were set in place for that level. So the bottom level of casing stones were set in place first and then the rough cut interior stones of the first level were set in place. When all of those stones were set in place, the first level of the Great Pyramid was completed. Flanders Petrie was of the opinion that the Great Pyramid was built level by level and that the casing stones for each level were set in place first before the interior stones of that level were set in place. So the order of stone placement described in these videos is consistent with the order of stone placement Flanders Petrie wrote about. The paving stones which support the first level of casing stones were set in place. Then the first level or course of casing stones were set in place. Then the interior stones were set in place for that level. The second course of casing stones were set in place. After that, the second course of interior stones were set in place. In, in basic terms, that is the order of placement of stones of the Great Pyramid. This will be elaborated on in detail in subsequent videos of this series. This series of videos will include computer-generated animations which depict a number of important issues about the construction of the Great Pyramid. 
This video series will describe how stones were set in place in a very rapid manner, how the large casing stones were moved to the building site and set in place, how the largest stones were moved from the Nile River up to the building site is described, as well as how the largest stones were moved to the necessary height and set in their final resting place. Also, how the capstone was ultimately set in place, if there was one, is described, as well as so much more. So please watch and enjoy this video series about how the Great Pyramid was built. Talk about our research on Facebook and Twitter. If you have any questions or comments, please contact us through our website at www.thepump.org. Thank you.